history. Oh. <laughs> oh. Living history, living history, it's the best. I, I have a question for you, Stephen, actually. Oh, I, always meant to, I always wanted to ask a lawyer who represents people in Guantanamo. Has anyone ever raised the issue that, hey, Guantanamo, weren't we supposed to give that back to the Cubans? <laughs> uh, you know, as people know, Guantanamo, the U.S. has that base there because we helped the Cubans win their independence in 1898. And then, you know, this uh, treaty that got signed a little later, uh, the U.S. got a 99-year lease in Guantanamo. But that 99-year lease is over, so... You know. Well, I don't think so, because if I understand correctly, in 1934, give or take, oh. uh, it was uh, re-whatever. Uh, but I learned on my trips down there that starting in uh, 63 or 64, uh, Brother Fidel stopped accepting the $4,000 a year yeah. checks. And he said, no, uh, I'm no longer leasing it to you. Uh, please leave. And of course, we said, no, thanks. We'll stay. <laughs> Oh, uh, speaking of lawyers, uh, Mark, one, one other lawyer's name comes to, springs to my mind, and that is Lynn Stewart. Uh, Lynn Stewart was a well-known lawyer in New York and Brooklyn who is now serving a 10, 15-year prison sentence for having uh, represented uh, a ter an accused terrorist who is now serving a life sentence for activities growing out of the first World Trade Center bombing back in 93. She was accused of being a courier, in effect, visiting her client in the prison there in New York City and taking messages out and conveying them to his co colleagues elsewhere. Uh, did she cross a line? How uh, Wasn't that attorney-client privilege? Well, the question of whether or not she crossed the line is something that I don't think any of us can know the answer to. What we know is what the government said and what the jury said. So there is a conviction. Whether or not Lynn did what they said she did and what she was convicted of, I can't speak to. What tripped her up was not simply carrying information from Sheikh Rahman out to other people, but it was the fact that there was a, a protective order and a, a gag order uh, on her that the conditions under which she was permitted to see her client placed strict limits on what she was able to uh, say and do with him and uh, with the information that he provided. And if I'm understanding you know, correctly what happened with her, the line that they say she crossed wasn't just that she took a message from him uh, and, and gave it to someone else, but that there was a court order in place uh, that, that was, was part of it. And I mean, we, we dealt with a very similar uh, you know, gag order on us when, when we visited our clients in Guantanamo. And uh, yeah. when we, in order to go on to, to the prison to see the clients there, we had to get security clearances. We then had to sign a contract with the government under the security clearances based on a agreement with the court, a memorandum of understanding that said, thou shalt not. And among the thou shalt nots that we had to deal with were, we could not tell our clients what was going on in the world. So I couldn't sit down with my Sudanese client and tell him what was going on in his home country. I could not discuss with him anything outside of the parameters of the case. And anything that we talked about, I mean, talk about attorney-client competences, which are you know, the core of the, of the relationship that we lawyers have with our clients, the notes that I took in my conversations, I had to give to the government censors to let them read my notes of the client conversations if I wanted to do anything with those notes. Now, I'm here, I'm not in jail. I was very careful to comply with the uh, restrictions that were placed on us. I don't know if Lynn did. And what I know is that if I had violated the contract that I signed, and the protective order under which I had to operate, I could have been prosecuted. Now, before we entered the cases, we had a healthy debate within the office and, and among all the lawyers who, who represented people in Guantanamo. We talked about, should we and could we ethically provide our services under those conditions? And we made the decision that the deprivation of process, what was happening to those men in Guantanamo was so bad 
that even if the government was going to change the rules on us, it was more important to get down there and to offer help than to say, nope, not going to play because your rules are stupid. And, uh, you know, Lynn may have crossed the line, and certainly she was convicted of having crossed the line. You know, um, I want to say something which 